Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Uchenda Achunine. I am glad to welcome us once again to the screening of the very important documentary the, titled MI Power, The Legend and the Legacy. A documentary that touches on the life and times of one of the finest politicians and administrators that Iboland has produced in the person of late Dr. Michael Ihanokara Obara, the former premier of Eastern region. Uh, as you may know, we started screening this documentary since January, 2021, as part of activities to mark a year long centenary celebration of this great man in honor of this great man. We are going to be screening this documentary every month, at least for the next six months. And so this evening, we are having the third global online screening of the documentary. As is our tradition, we usually would start the documentary or usher in the documentary with a webinar, a conversation. Today's conversation is a, a unique one. We're going to have two very erudite uh, evil sons discuss the subject matter, Zikora, the making of the MIR documentary. So um, we have in our midst, Ezenda Ugonalo, Ed Emeka Kiazo, who is the producer of the documentary. Um, he's going to be on what some people would call the hot seat. And uh, another erudite personality, Jerome Okolo, will be asking him questions. We want to know how did he cook this food that uh, we've been eating since January of this year. Um, and all the intricacies that, uh, that are involved. Our, our focus on this subject matter is because we understand that uh, uh, history and memories matter and they are essential to building a sustainable future. We would say that the memory that you have that you do not share with others is dead. And so we consider documenting uh, capturing, archiving, and preserving memories as very uh, important to us at the Center for Memories. And that's why you, we, from time to time, would produce documentaries to educate, to enlighten people, and also to preserve these memories. So uh, please make welcome these two great men that are going to be having this conversation while we sit into this thing. I am going to. Uh, so uh, leave the floor to uh, the interviewer, uh, Mr. Jerome Okolo, who would uh, do a quick uh, intro of uh, uh, the interviewee slash the producer of the documentary, as in there, Ugunabo, Ed, Emeka Kiazo, to uh, take the floor. So we'll sit down. I welcome all of you and enjoy you to sit down and uh, make the best out of this conversation. Uh, towards the end, we're going to uh, open the, the uh, open up for audience to participate and also contribute to this conversation today. Once again, on behalf of the Center for Memories, I want to welcome all of us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Richard, and um, good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a global audience, so wherever you are, I greet you. Um, thank you, Center for Memories, for putting together this uh, webinar. Um, I think um, I would have had this conversation with uh, Ugonabo, Ezenia, Ed Kiazo, at any rate. Um, it would have been a private uh, conversation, but um, um, I would have found him anywhere in the world to ask him for one hour of his time to ask him how he undertook this journey to discover MI Opera for all of us again. But um, Center for Memories has... Um, had a better idea to turn the conversation into a global conversation. So uh, the first part of the conversation will be myself talking to 
the um, uh, producer of this uh, documentary, um, as in uh, Ed um, Kiazo. And uh, the second part will be audience participation. We will welcome your questions and I should put them to uh, the producer of the, um, of the documentary to um, help us address. So um, without much ado, um, let's get into the subject matter. First of all, we'd like to find out um, as much as possible about the man himself who undertook the journey on behalf of all of us. So um, I will do a brief in introduction, although I'm sure he doesn't need um, a lot of introduction to a large number of Igbo people around the world. He's an accomplished and uh, world-renowned um, a lawyer, historian, journalist, fellow of the Royal Society of Arts and Sciences in the United Kingdom. He is also the author of the um, following acclaimed, um, uh, critically acclaimed works. He wrote the Lagos Hamburg Line, A Brief History of German Commerce in Nigeria, 1590 to 2016. He also wrote 120 Great Nigerians We Never Knew. Um, he wrote the Federation Cup and Nigerian Football. The honors list of the fighting men of the Nigerian Regiment of World War II. Uh, his documentary film works include the critically acclaimed January 15, 1970, Untold Memories of the Nigeria Biafra War. He also made the film Company Yaya, The Lost African Voices of World War II. Um, he made another film, The Legend of Thurston Shore, um, and then um, Lagos, The Birth of a City of Style. And finally, his um, latest work is the work about which we have all gathered together today, um, the film M.I. Okbara, um, The Legend and The Legacy. Ed Kiazo is a member of the Board of Trustees of the Nigerian Legal History Society. Um, he's also on the Board of Directors of Iba Ajie, the Obabia Sika Knowledge Resource Center, amongst others. He's, he was consultant historian for the official federal government of Nigeria centenary documentary, We Are Nigerians, and a recipient of an award from the African Society of Cambridge University in, in 2014 for his work in African history. He was a pioneer West Africa regional editor of Music in Africa and a regular pundit on Nigerian cultural and social history, including the history of the media and entertainment industries. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming um, Ugonabo, Ed, Emeka Kiazo, and um, I will start by posing um, uh, the opening question, which is essentially, um, Ugonabo, what drove you to discover Michael Okbara for us? What was the motivating uh, factor for choosing to tell this story at this time? Uh, Wesley, thank you so much for the uh, for the uh, you know in introduction. I actually wondering if I was wondering if you're talking about me, but uh, uh, we thank we thank God for His mercies, and um, you know I thank the Center for Memories for this opportunity to discuss this in some detail. Yeah, the motivation. Um, to be honest, the uh, the issue of my, the story of Michael Opara has been one that I have been studying personally for many years as an historian. I mean, um, yes, a lot of my my published works have been on um, you know uh, uh, you know broad topics ranging from football to military history and so on. And so but one a subject that I have been involved with intimately and on a very personal level has been the history of Nibo. You know, not just the ancient history of Nibo, which is begging for critical scholarship, but the modern history. You know, um, ranging from the you know the, the colonial period, you know when the changes started to occur uh, uh, in Igbo land. And if I borrow the title of uh, Professor Chima Korea's book called uh, "The Land Has Changed," you know um, how when the land changed, or when uh, 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 Professor Chima Achebe would say when the rain started beating us, because these fundamental changes in Igbo society are, are, are still being felt in, in many respects, both positive and largely negative in the present day. So I've been actually been a scholar of critical changes, the evolution of Igbo society um, as a very detailed subject. Now, you cannot discuss changes to Igbo society without looking, sorry about that, without looking at the Eastern region. Uh, of Nigeria, because that is the, the concentration of Ndibo was, in fact, the totality of Ndibo were within the uh, political uh, borders of the old Eastern region. So that it, I had been a student of this for many years, and also there's a personal involvement because my, uh, the Emma Okmara was uh, a, a tenant to my great grandmother, and my father, you know, you know, referred to him as Uncle Mike. You know, so he was someone that we both we loved and admired in my family, as well as his place, strategic place. In, as in the driving seat of the Eastern region where Indigo were located and which is the focus of a large part of my scholarship. Now, 
the film. Um, I received a call from uh, Eke Mwafia, Patrick Kukibo, the chairman of the Center for Memories, you know, um, last, in fact, the year before last, because I had gathered quite a bit of data on the Eastern region. And then he was doing some research on his own. And he asked me to, you know, avail him of some of this material. And then while we were making the Biafran documentary, which was the, uh, the, 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 the first project I worked on for the center, well, the first film project that I'd been consulting, volunteering for the center before now, he mooted this subject. He said, Ezenia, we have to do this. And uh, I was like, ah. <laughs> and if we, I mean, it, it has to be done. You know, the, the issue was how uh, uh, it could be done. So. Eventually, by the time we, um, I, 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 early last year, mid last year, I had produced a documentary on uh, Mazio Kon, you know, the uh, famous impresario who we lost sadly uh, early this year. And part of a very, a, a very important part of that documentary was focused on an assignment he carried out under direct instructions of Dr. Emma Okmara in the Western region, the Western region elections. So. Let's just say that it was. It is a part of the next answer I'm going to give to the next question you ask, of course. Um, and that was the catalyst for interest and the impetus for the making of this documentary. So to put it in, to answer your question simply, it was at the behest of Ekemofa uh, Patrick Okibo, and also as a result of my own personal interest in the subject. And you know that's why we find ourselves here. Thank you very much, uh, Um I have to say that, that um, for those of us who have seen the documentary, um, I don't think anybody will be left unmoved about the monumentality of the effort um, and how um, really you had to drag the story out. We are not a people that are renowned for keeping records, especially public records. And there were um, not, to my knowledge, a lot of published material uh, that you could have uh, found easy to mine from. So can you please um, lead us um, into a short journey about the key um, difficulties in actually um, putting this story together? Thank you. Um, let me, I, I have at this point to talk about the actual trigger point for the implementation of the process. After the Mars Yukonu documentary had been screened, uh, engineer Chibi Uzua, Uzua the um, Oduma Mede, you know, um, late engineer Chidi Uzua watched the documentary and uh, messaged Ekon Wafika and said, we have to make a documentary on MI Opera. And, you know, the question of funds came up because as we know, the Center for Memories, you know, does an incredible amount of work, but has a finite amount of resources, which it's, I mean, I think it's a, it is a tribute to its a board of trustees and the, 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 the you know, management that they managed to achieve so much with so little so that the issue of funding came up. Oduma Mede did not hesitate. He was like, look, 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 let's not waste time. I'm sending you some money. It wasn't a huge amount of money. You understand? I'm sending you some money. Kaibidolo. Let's start immediately. I need a quick one. You know, so it was, that was like, we were, uh, Eko Hoffi and I, we looked at each other in shock. We said, ah, nah. <laughs> you know, this is serious. So, you know, and that was all I needed because it's not because we, I mean, the center now, we now, uh, I now, uh, uh, you know, I can now matched with some funding. I now also uh, 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 pledged uh, 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 a substantial amount, not, not as much as them, but a substantial amount apart from my time, because my time has a cost, obviously, but I also pledged some cash and pledged my time absolutely free of charge. And the work started, you know, the, and then the first thing was research. Obviously, I've been researching him, so we already had a, a, a rolling start. So what were the most, you know, I mean, having researching is one thing, but collating materials in a, an orderly fashion that uh, 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 populates the timeline of a documentary is a separate issue altogether. And you very correctly state that record keeping is not the greatest, it's not our greatest forty as, as, a, as a nation. Um, luckily, I have been collecting materials on MI Opera for over 12 years. So I, I had an advantage and I have a vast newspaper library. You know, um, I buy uh, uh, microfiche copies from the British Library as much as I can. I mean, it cost me something like about 10 pence per page and I have thousands of pages. So it's cost me quite a bit of money. So when people often see my watermarked copies, they should understand why I watermarked them because I paid for them and it's part of my library. Anyway, on a separate, on a separate note, 
it was now, we now had to prepare a script. My wife and I sat down, I, I did the research, completed the research, and I must pay tribute to Christian Igodo, um, Emma Apara's uh, most recent biographer. I must also pay tribute to uh, Christopher Dele, the late Christopher Dele. I must also pay tribute to uh, the late H.K. Omphonry because they are three gentlemen, as well as Mr. Pai, Dr. Pai Osopi uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Chifonye Mugochuku, who have written about M.I. Opara and their, the, the work that they had done was extremely was invaluable in fact checking and populating the script. So we had to do that and then we had to start production. Now, as you, we all know, 2020 was the year of COVID. And um, the documentary started, we started production in the middle of a lockdown when you could not move from state to state. It was that simple. And we weren't going to break the law. You know? So we had to now recruit film crews in various towns. We had to recruit, um, Oduman Bede was incredible. He recruited a film crew led by Elder Mubale Leong at home are here. You know, obviously closer to uh, Umeguapala, which is where uh, Madame Adam Mopara uh, lives, and also um, Omekania, who's Odin Makmara, who was also an incredible assistance to us. You know, she granted us an interview. We had to interviews in Lagos were done by a separate crew, and I have to pay tribute to the to the, to the technical crew that were involved in this. My wife is my co-producer. Um, I was a director, by the way, of the of the documentary, and you know, directing remotely is no is no joke in the, in COVID. And my assistant director and director of photography, uh, Nick Monso, did a yeoman's job because eventually, when travel was now allowed, he now took off. You know, in very difficult conditions. You know, the our drone pilot Chigo Ziatama, you know, came in from Nsuka, Kingsley Odo, Atama came in from Nsuka. It was a, a you know a monumental task, but we thank God. You know that we were able to project. I was able to project manage this. You know, pull all the strands together to God's glory because it wasn't. I'm sorry to say, it wasn't man that <laughs> did this. It, it was beyond the, the scope of my own abilities. You know, I also want to pay tribute to my crew, the crew in Abuja, led by uh, Felix Honos Felix Satori. You know, and it, what is beautiful about this is that these are very young people, generally apart from myself and my wife, obviously, but very young people, the crew who knew little or nothing about these personalities, but as they got involved, they were immersed in the personality. And the thing is, when you begin to see that this thing you're doing is bigger than you, is bigger than this small, small targets you give yourself in your life as a young person, you start to see that there was something bigger, more important than the banalities that form our existence. They put in, they gave blood, sweat, and tears for this work, and I cannot commend uh, these chaps enough. And, you know, eventually I came into Nigeria, um, uh, uh, late uh, last year in November, specifically for the purpose of concluding this, and uh, we began editing. And you know, by we actually, my intention was that this documentary must be screened on the 25th of December, which was Emma Opara's centenary. It was actually his birthday. But by the time we finished, I I decided that it was best, and myself and Eka Wafia and uh, Uche decided it was best to postpone it till January because even though we had finished. We were concerned that on the 25th of December is a day that Nibu are uh, somewhat distracted. <laughs> so that we felt it would be not, it would be, it will not be befitting for it to be an afterthought for people. You know, we wanted a big splash at its launch. So I, uh, we decided that it should be screened on the 23rd of January. And well, let's just say I want to thank also my editor, uh, Femd Daniel. Um, in, 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 I'm sorry, I can't is uh, is an uh, uh, your name. I'm struggling with it, but he, I'm sure he will forgive me. Which is why he's referred to as Femd Daniel. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> and uh, you know he did an incredible job. I mean, to edit a two-hour, twenty-four-minute documentary. We initially it was supposed to be one hour, thirty minutes, but after studying the content. It will have been cheaper to do it in one hour. It will have been cheaper to do it in one hour, 30 minutes. But I said, look, you know, we don't do small things. I even do, but we don't do small things. We do big things. You know, if we want to talk about Michael Opera, I, will, I refuse to have his story limited, you know, by, you know, irrelevances like money or time, you know, or effort. And fundamentally, I, I told the came off, I said, Bianna, Luciano Pavarotti's documentary is two hours. Why should I be truncating M.I. Alcaraz Dominic documentary? It will be long. Anybody who does not have the patience or 
or, or enlightenment, you know, or gravitas to spend time studying one of the greatest Nigerians, you know, Africans that ever lived. And as, even if you make it five minutes, it would, they will not, it will not appeal to them. The text speak generation. So I said, we will make it two hours, 24 minutes. And well, that was the final product. And that, but it was a lot of work. And there were many sleepless nights. Well, some of you were enjoying Christmas. I was at the studio on, at about 6 a.m. on Christmas day. I had to leave because the poor chap was extreme sick and the editor was ill. He, was, he had a very, very bad malaria. That was the only reason why I left. Otherwise, I would have spent Christmas Day with him. But that's what we had to do to get this out. So um, I know it's a long explanation, but it was a journey. It was stressful. It was difficult. And by the way, I was actually quite unwell myself. I was, I've been, you know, for the men, month of, months of December, January, and up till early February, I was so, so ill that at one stage I could not walk. You know, wow. I could not, yes, I could not walk. I needed to have, you know, it was like I needed to I would have, get a brain scan done, but it didn't stop the work going on because as I said, when you are carrying a load that is bigger than you, when you are pursuing, pursuing an objective that is bigger than your problems, that is bigger than your limitations, you know, you look, you go the extra mile, but it wasn't, as I said, it, God had to be involved. I am a God person. God had to be involved. And I just, I thank God that we managed to deliver finally. So thank you very much, Ibunabo. This story is obviously a special story. It's um, one of those central stories of our modern um, development um, as a people. Um, but we need to tell um, other stories. Our um, Igbo society is complex and uh, rich. And, um, you know, the phrases you've used in describing um, how this effort was put together, you know, blood, sweat and tears, sleepless nights, you know, beyond the power of man, you know, um, all of that effort. Um, and knowing you, I know you would not invest such huge effort if it wasn't worth it. So um, why do stories like this matter? Why does, um, why do we have to preserve our memory in this way? Um, what is the big, um, you know, purpose for investing you know, as you rightly said, blood, sweat, and tears, sleepless nights, and walking through um, from your sick bed, and um, all the effort that was put together by, by the amazing team that you've listed. Why does it um, matter in the end for us to um, preserve our memories in this way? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let, let me reference. A, I, I, I used a part of my what I do as part of my volunteer work. I volunteer with young secondary school children, teaching them history teaching them, you know, maybe what you used to call civics. Now, I talked about the leave that thing syndrome. Leave that thing was is a phrase used, a, a colloquial phrase used in, that emerged in Nigeria around the 80s, around the era of uh, General Babangida, when, you know, it was used to discount whenever there's any attempt at being fastidious or being, you know, being idealistic, people tell you, leave that thing, I beg. Now, yes. that's one of the most destructive phrases in the history of this country because it signaled the desecration of values, simple values in our society, basic, simple, decent values of decency and probity. Now, Igbo society suffered, I would say this as I say, hoha. The war destroyed Igbo society, you know, to an act to, it, to a, a level that is hard to describe. Our, the, the, the total devaluation of our, our, our value system, you know, occurred as a result of defeat in that war. You know, some, we lost some of our best, we lost some of our finest, we lost material wealth. People who were not killed and physically destroyed were psychologically destroyed. And that resulted, as, as, as Professor Anya said in the Bear Friend documentary, he said certain values, certain things that were, that were not possible in Igbo society before the war became normal after the war. Certain individuals who really should not have the limelight now became the spokesmen of Igbo. But let's leave it at that. So when you want to, when young people grow up and all they see are individuals who represent the post-war devalued ethos in our society, and that's all they've known. Somebody who grew up and was born in 1987, who has children now, has a good job, is a decision maker, right, in many respects. But then all he has seen has been A, B, C, D as the uh, role models. 
to use quote unquote. Now, you and I know, because you, you and I are about the same age, we know what value systems that at least the vestiges that we inherited in our youth. And I feel that documentaries like this remind us of who we are. And it's not just about Tundigo. It's also about Nigeria, because this malaise I'm talking about is not just an Igbo problem. It may be pronounced because of the Igbo's uh, 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 disposition to you know, the war, the effects of the war, but it's also a Nigerian problem, a very broad Nigerian problem, the devaluation of systems, you know, the devaluation of standards. So what you want to do is remind people that they're good, they're good. Yes, you may see this around you, but remember there was a time we were not like this. And this is possible. And it is also a message that resonates because people are angry, people have had enough. You know what I mean? The Sorosoki generation have had enough of the you know, the, the, the life, the, you know, the wastage, you know, the low standards, because many of them travel in a globalized society. They see the difference between what we are and what other societies are without their problems. Everybody has their own problems. But then they look at us and see the potential because they also see their mates doing big things in Europe, doing big things. Look at you. Look at your career, Jerome. You know, look at what you've done. Or then they come here and they see their fellows here, which equally skilled without opportunity so that they are angry. So what you want to do is remind them that it was possible before, it was done before. We had these templates. The Eastern region was the fastest growing economy in the world. Some of the best minds in the world, in the Evo, came home to work with the Eastern region government. And you know, their skills were actually transferred, ironically, to the Biafran government, but that's a separate issue. Came to work because there was that sense of investment. So it is important, memory is important because you, you know, like even in music, you know, they say when you want to start a song, you say, where is the A? You cannot know where to start a song unless you know the, where the starting point is. Then you can start to plot, even in architecture, even in design, which, you know, where do you start? Where is the beginning? It's the point where you begin to lay a foundation. You have to pick a point. And when you don't know where that point is, well, as the end of it, we'll just be looking at each other. So memory. Now, you talk documentaries as a, temp as a template for preserving memory. The fact is that in a, society, in, in a society where books have less relevance, where the publishing industry was destroyed, indigenous publishing industry was destroyed by the, 19, by the 1980s and 1990s, the Forex collapse and the Babangida's wonderful, wonderfulness, you know, the reality is that books became harder to access and the culture of reading was subsumed. Now, you have a phone. You can watch Emma Alcaraz's documentary on YouTube because everybody has access to YouTube. So documentaries have become an important way of disseminating information. And it is make, it's the most important thing is making sure that this information that is being disseminated is positive, value-driven. And that is why how important documentaries are. You know, and the thing is that there's a lot of dross there. The last, anybody can wake up and call himself an historian and put something together. So quality documentary making became an imperative. And that is why the Center for Memories, in spite of the difficulties in raising funds, in spite of the finite nature of its resources, has gone the extra mile with the, with the assistance of people like yourself, people like the donors like Odumame, uh, there are many others who, you know, give their widow's might just to make sure that these programs are going on. We are turning the tide. You know, it's not easy, but it can be done. And that is what this process is all about. Thank you very, very much. Much. Um, I, I have to um, continue to thank you for you know your absolute uh, commitment and devotion to the cause of um, um, reminding us about um, uh, who we are, reminding us about what we've been able to do, what we've been capable of doing in uh, even more difficult times, and thus um, uh, continuing to inspire us to not um, accept um, you know uh, the pedantry uh, standards that are around us today and not to accept uh, what passes now for um, you know pseudo leadership across Ibolan. Um, uh, people like yourself and um, the late engineer um, uh, Chidi Zuwa are, are modern leaders. You, you are the people actually doing things to uh, give Ibolan the, the pride that we deserve and to continue to um, inspire us to, to greater things and for somebody to be in office and not rise to the same standard of leadership which you are able to show not being in office um, is for them to, um, as we say in Ibo land, to count their teeth with their, with their tongues <laughs> and, um, and, and consider how they sometimes have wasted the opportunity to um, you know, be like Michael Okwara, 
And that's the kind of thing that we continue to um, tell those people who find themselves in positions of office. We need to tell them always to be like Michael Opera. But there are some blessings to carrying this cross, um, Ugonabo. Um, the, uh, the blessing is that um, you are at the coal face. So can you please share with us how making this um, documentary about Michael Lockbara affected you personally and um, whether it has changed your view about how we organize things? Um, you know, I, I think from my own personal point of view, just watching the documentary, I was utterly amazed as to how they could actually coordinate their affairs, sitting in Enugu and managing things as, you know, as far as um, uh, Oloibiri and there. Uh, uh, Obudu and um, Musuka and all over the place with no internet, no iPhones, obviously no Land Cruisers and no more Paul Escorts. Um, <laughs> so um, can you please tell us how um, this story actually affected you? And as I said, um, whether it has changed your view about um, how we are and how we should be. Oh, for, for, for certain. The thing is, I, I mean, I I had a, a let's just say studying Michael Opera had, you know, and, and indeed his generation changed my perception of what is possible? You know, as uh, Professor Patu told me and uh, put in the, in the, in the, he said, look, he was, he, you know, he, he understood the, the art of the possible, you know, and for him, the impossible was nothing. You know, there was that energy, there was that confidence that, look, you can achieve once you have the will, once you have the brains, you can achieve anything. And, you know, from, he refused to accept mediocrity. He refused. I mean, another very telling moment in that documentary was when, you know, was, uh, brainstorming with uh, 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 with his uh, trusted lieutenant and friend of throughout his life, where they were discussing brainstorming and uh, uh, Debob was seeing impossibilities. His response to him was, Bob, you're not thinking. You're not thinking, you know, and then broke down his ideas. Now, it's not just about talking and making, he, he would have an idea, get up and move and pursue it, you know, he broke the bureaucratic shackles that would ordinarily have stood in the way of his achieving his uh, 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 objectives, but without destroying the institutions, you understand? He did that in a studied, intellectual, sensible manner without destroying the institutions, which are there in any case to provide the checks and balances, you know, within the framework of the executive administration. So what it showed me was the possibilities that exist when the will is there, when the knowledge is there. You know, I mean, it was, it was moving to hear these accounts. And that is what, you know, I mean, I know about Michael O'Para, but hearing from uh, Professor Patutumi, who may not have known the impact of his sentence to me, or indeed from uh, Omekan O'Para, uh, who may not have known the impact of what he was saying, he said, I mean, those words again, Bob, you're not thinking. This is what we can do. And then broke down the, in the introduction of the kibbutz system to employ graduates of universities, teacher training colleges in the farms, give them a good standard of living, feed people. Once people have food, you've dealt with that. Then they can start thinking. People who are not eating, <laughs> eating cannot think. They cannot look at innovation. You deal with the, you know, the, 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 the essential needs of man. And is the ESO self-sufficient in food production? Then we began to look at technological innovation. We began to look at industrialization. And that was what the man did. And that's the art of the possible, where in the impossible is stated as a marker. And that is what I took away from this. Thank you so much, Tugana. But I can feel um, uh, some people um, uh, from all over the world willing me to ask you the next um, and probably final set of questions. Um, uh, but I, we, I know that writers don't like to talk about uh, uh, the books that they have in the works, but I'm sure you can give us some hints about um, uh, maybe some uh, future um, uh, targets of your erudite um, uh, uh, mind. Um, <laughs> are, are there any documentaries we should be tantalizingly waiting for? Um, oh, yes. And, um, and if you may, uh, can you also use the opportunity to, um, I'm sure some people will be wondering how they can help support such um, efforts. If Indeed. you can help, uh, once you've told us what is coming, to tell us how Centre for Memories um, can raise funds to support some of your future plans and how uh, this whole thing can be put together um, going forward on a more institutional basis so that we don't depend on the same willing people um, uh, to always put their hands in their pockets uh, to support such, um, uh, such, uh, such ventures so that we can make it something that is uh, for all of us and so that all of us can continue to come together to make sure that these stories are told. Indeed, thank you. Um, the next project, I mean, I have a couple of projects going on 
Um, one is uh, the on a, pers on a personal level, which is a, a project on called Stand Up Sister, which is uh, um, being driven by my by my wife, who as I was a veteran broadcaster and journalist. So this is actually going to be her baby, but I'll be sitting down there doing boy boy. Anyway, um, the one I will in which. Uh, I will be working on hopefully with the Center for Memories is something that we talked about. And I can see that Juliet Kego is there. Juliet, we're coming for you because the next documentary is called Ijele Wang. We are showcasing the Amazons of Igbo land. You know, the, those women, because in the documentary, in the apparent documentary, we gave a, a few minutes as much as we could to showing the agency of women in the, in the, uh, in the political movements in the East. You know, I mean, What's, what the idea for this came after, while I was interviewing uh, Dr. Chineku Davis, who's the daughter of uh, Dr. Mbanugo, who was uh, Dr. Opara's best friend, they wouldn't take no decisions in the Eastern region without asking. We have to ask no more what they think. We have to get their opinion first, because women like Miriam Zimiro, one of the richest Nigerians, not just women, women like uh, 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 Margaret Epo, who we know, who we all know, an Igbo woman married to uh, uh, an ethnic doctor, you know, many women like Janet Mokello. These were formidable women. She talked about how anytime she sees them marching into the house, she says, okay, they've come. So everywhere is shaking because, you know, these are women of substance. So the agency of these women and the agency of women, you know, in, as a whole, in Igbo land, in Igbo society, was such that I thought, you know what, the next documentary has to be about Igbo women has to be focused on Igbo women, their agency, their strategic role in Igbo society, not just historically, because that is evident, even though some people would turn, push patriarchy as some kind of traditional institution, which it is not, you know, we will also want to talk about the evolution through colonial society. My great grandmother, Ujiazu, was a, an extremely wealthy trader. And there's a photograph taken in 1920, 21, in which she seated next to my great, my, my great grandfather. In fact, she's my great great grandmother, she's the mother of my great grandmother. And you could see the power and confidence. In fact, the way my uh, great grandfather, Ubuli, a warrior, the way he sat next to her was like, uh -uh, don't mess with this one. So it showed the agency and strength of Mwa Indibo. You understand me? So that is our next focus. Please, we need support. I will always invest funds. I mean, I, 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 what I invested in the Opera documentary was in excess of one and a half million. And I don't want to go into how much the center invested. The center invested, definitely invested more than that. But then we always work to close to the boom because we always make sure that we cut our quota according to our sizes. And the thing is, that investment I made was in purchasing licenses and the like. I give my materials free of charge. I give my time absolutely free of charge. I do not charge one penny of my time. My tickets to Nigeria, I paid for it from my pocket. I didn't get there, you know, it was from my pocket. I, I didn't even add, I'm not even adding that to the costs. So we need help. If it's 50,000, if it's 100,000, all I know is that if you donate it, you will see the value. But when I tell people how much we spent putting this document, it, it was actually donated and how much we spent, they are amazed because like, how did you achieve it with so little? Well, we did because if I have this is what you're doing for your people. No, but I will never make millions from uh, documentaries. I will never make my millions from it. I may never make millions in any event, but I will never, certainly not from documentaries. The legacy in which we are living for our society goes beyond this. And we have been greatly blessed by the support of a lot of individuals who have always been there, yourself, or Dumame, the IKQK, many others like that who have always supported. But this, this is our project. It's not just mine or the Center for Memories. This is a, a, a part of a trust, you know, a secret trust for Ndiwo. You understand me? Which we are bequeathing to the society. So please, we need your help. Now, when you make documentaries, you often go to, there are lots of funding bodies out there. But the reality is that the Biafran documentary, for instance, we went to a couple of funding agencies, funding bodies. They refused to give us money because they said, ah, it is political. So, which means they control, they control your content. Now, if a funding body had been giving us money for the Biafran documentary, we would not have been able to make it because they would have told me, asked me what I ate for breakfast and what time and where, what time I'm going to sleep, what is going to be in the documentary. But we're able to produce a credible work, which was political, but it was honest. At least nobody has come to say that we told lies against them. 
it was honest and our people's voices needed to be heard. So as much as possible, we need the agency. I, I don't take government contracts. I do not do government contracts. I've never taken one. I'm not interested in it because I don't want anything that ties my hands. And the beauty of working with the center is the center simply tell me, nah, do this for us. And there's trust that whatever I produce will be in line with its very high standards of one, morality, ethical standards, and also in terms of the content, in terms of the quality, in terms of fact-checking. So Bikono, this is not just my work, it is yours, it belongs to Nibo. My children who, are, who live in England, who were born in England, watch these documentaries and others from the Center for Memory. It's for them, it's for your children too. So Bikono, we need your help, please support us. You know, don't give me money, Biko. give to the Center for Memories. At least you know where they are <laughs> and you know the work they're doing. And, you know, Chimamanda, my sister, supported recently, you know, a prize she received. She gave all of it to the center for the Nzuko, Nzuko Umaka, you know, and we're seeing the results. So the center needs your help. So we're going to help us. You know, I, I make this appeal without shame, without pride. Dalo. Ugana, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really, again, cannot stop thanking you. And um, I want to assure you that um, in the words of um, mm -hmm. uh, the Russian poet uh, Pushkin, you have built for yourself a monument that is bigger and more lasting than anything a man can do with their hands. And um, these are the kind of monuments that would live for very, very long after we are all gone from here. And please continue to give to Ndibo. And I want to join um, your plea to Ndibo across the world um, and across Nigeria and across Ibo land. Let us come together and continue to tell our stories. If another person starts to pay uh, the flute, uh, flu uh, flutist, then the flutist might start playing uh, the tunes of those people. Uh, but we, when we pay our own flutists, we will tend to get our own songs, th those songs that drive us and move us and ins inspire us to higher things uh, um, like we've always done. But I cannot end this by going back to the theme that you touched last, um, we're gonna have, I want to drag you back into the ring. I won't let you go away like this. I know you're being, I know, yes, I know you're being very, very modest, but anybody who has watched the documentary uh, will, will, will um, not, um, uh, not have noticed that this story was told not by you, but by an Ijele wine. And so please, <laughs> I, I want you to take, um, you know, a couple of minutes to tell us about your wonderful co-pilot, your editor, your muse, your your isn't <laughs> wine, uh, and, um, and and please tell us about her because I know you've been you're, you you're trying to be modest by not dragging the whole family, but this is a special case. Oh, and please let's put let, let's put her central and um, and talk about <laughs> talk about her role in this um, in this story. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, you know, my wife is a, she's a, she's a, look, this is, would not have been possible without her. You know, she is the, I am the, you know, I just, I move like a trailer, but she is the one that was say, my friend, Kuda, let's check the breakfast. Let's check the exhaust. Let's check the oil. You know, she is the quality controller and she's, uh, she's tough. Forget about anything you see, she is tough. You know, I'm, I'm a very difficult man, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm driven. But so is she, but she's not as uh, aggressive as me. Let's put it that way. And she knows how to say, oh boy, cool down. Let's sort this out. She was the, um, she, I don't try to do a script without her going through it because she's a, a trained broadcaster. I mean, she actually studied broadcasting in the US, almost uh, graduating almost 43 years ago. You know, um, she also studied, she was one of the pioneer, pioneer set of journalists at the Sunday Punch in 1973. So she actually had a column and a social and entertainment column called Shade Girl About Town, 1973 to 1975. So let's just say this is her field. And um, as I said, we, we work on projects together. It's, it gets tense because when you have two people who are, you know, as long as two people are thinking, there must always be disagreement. But the thing is, when, whenever there's vex, okay, I go downstairs, I make tea. I say, hey, because have you done vex finished? Okay, let's, let's go back to this thing. Let's go back to this point. And we brainstorm. And eventually we agree. And I think it's, I don't, whenever I want to I finish a draft, I'm like, hey, I start shaking. I said, this woman is going to come and tear this thing apart. But when she watches it, and the thing is her, her response is that very, very cutting, or she says, mm, it's okay. I was like, hey, when she says it's okay, you better go back and work on it. But when she, when she claps her hands and gets emotional, I say, hey, I've come. So let's put it this way. It doesn't go until she's played it. Sometimes I try and sneak 
past her. She's like, my friend, come back here. I want to see it. You know, so that's how we work. And it's a, it's a blessing to have a partner in the, in the true sense of the word. It's never, it's not always easy. And, uh, but the thing is, you know, if you are de de dealing with a strong, with a strong partner, you know, a strong wife, that is a blessing. You know, we're able to, we, 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 as I said, I, I challenge this thick, patriarchal, uh, 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 tropes that are thrown about. A true Igbo man knows that you need a woman that will advise you and tell you the truth and say, my friend, come, I lie. I don't agree. We don't, we Igbos, that's the real Igbos, don't thrive on women that keep quiet and say, yes, sir, yes, sir. Mba. We, we thrive and respect women that will say, Mba, dim, this, is what is, this is what I believe. This is my point. I stand on this. You know, and I am grateful that uh, even though my wife is not Igbo, she has imbibed that ethos, and I, I thank God. Please don't get me started. I could talk for one hour. So the campus is here. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sure that um, uh, all the people participating in this webinar around the world uh, will be also willing me at this point to give a round of applause oh, to um, um, the Center so for Memories, to Mrs. Uh, Moni King as well, to yourself, Ugona Boed Kazo, for a wonderful labor of love, which has turned out to be something that we should be going back um, often to revisit and revisit and revisit. Um, each thank time you. I watch it, I, I, I am blessed in a different way. And thank you very, very much for that gift. And so thank I'm you. handing over to Uchenna Chunine of uh, the Center for Memories. Um, Uchenna, so um, please take over from here and um, address uh, the questions that have been coming in from the audience. Thank you very, very much for everybody who's been with us so far. And uh, just uh, uh, remain with us, uh, send your questions across while we still have um, uh, we're going to have Ed Kazo with us. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Jerome. And uh, thank you, Ezenia. I think it's been a very wonderful session. I've uh, learned quite a lot, in spite of the fact that uh, I've been part of the journey uh, all the way from last year. But uh, it's been quite uh, an uh, uh, exposing moment and the learning session for me. Uh, so I don't know the people in the audience if we have one or two persons who want to make a comment um, about today's on today's discussion, Zikora, the making of the MIOR documentary, and and about making documentaries, the importance of documentaries and the uh, the need to capture memories. Um, so if anybody indicates uh, interest to make a comment, uh, would allow that person to make a quick comment. Um, in the absence of that, uh, would now start uh, taking the uh, concluding remarks. So I don't know the audience, if anybody has any uh, comments. Uh, Uche, Uche, if there are no comments, I have a tribute video to Odumame that I think we would like to share for a minute or so before we, we round up. Just, I just thought I should mention that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe we would, we would use that as wrapping up. Uh, uh, you, you want to play it from your end? Or? I, I've sent it to you by WhatsApp if you want to play it from your end, but if you want me to play from my end, I can experiment. Only thing is I hope I don't start showing you the Arsenal match because I'm not very clued up with these things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so while we're waiting to get, uh, I, I've seen it, I'm trying to uh, download it uh, into my system. While, while I'm trying to do that, let's see if there's anybody that has any... Yeah, there's a question from Iken now. Okay. So, so uh, Ikenna is asking, thanks a lot CFM, Ed and others for the wonderful documentary. I was wondering how these stories could get to the political leaders in Ibo land today. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I, let, let me just answer that simply. The documentary is there for them to view. I mean, we had uh, 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 Naya, who, uh, Senator Abaribe, who was uh, on the documentary itself. So, and I'm certain this thing is, is, uh, is available, you know, and you know, we, we have access to them. The Center for Memories has access to them. They have access to this. Anybody who wants to watch this documentary, it's available for them. You know, anybody who wants to see what is possible is there. You see, the reality is that, you know, people make governance seem 
like you it is something so mysteriously difficult and incredibly complex it's oh, michael okpara showed that it was is really if your if your commitment is to getting things done you will do it the resources are there you will do it if you want to do to get things right it, it, it's obvious we've even seen more modern things. i'm not going to call anybody's name i don't want to be seen to be campaigning for any politician but they have seen one or two examples in the last uh, uh, 20 years of people who actually managed to get things done, not just in Igbo land, you know, across Nigeria. So people, when the commitment is there, you will deliver. But the truth is that people hide behind excuses, people hide behind, you know, as they say, there's, a, there's a joke at uh, Onitamoto Park, that when guy, when a guy, when guy man wants to cover his nzama, you raise dust, and then, you know, dust everywhere. But meanwhile, what is the real thing that is happening, the real nzama that is going on, you understand, or why you that is going on is being hidden behind the dust. You understand? This so our preoccupation is all, is all with all the gragra. Meanwhile, the real objective, which is not necessarily the right thing, is happening on the side. So, all I'm saying, my point being that Opera's example showed that leadership is a simple process of commitment and, you know, and pursue uh, just the pursuit of ideals to realize the objectives of governance, which are not even complex. So, to answer the question, one, uh, one weekend, uh, the, the documentary is there for them to watch. Opera's life is there for them to watch. The, the figures are there. It's not even like, um, and I don't need to conjure up magic. The, the statistics, the data is there. The, you know, a lot of the industry that he built, they're not hidden on Mars. They're there. Anybody that wants to. What they not come to follow or whether they simply want to give excuses. That's all I can say. Uche um, emphasis on um, on leadership. Um, when Michael Okwara, as you can see in the um, in the documentary, and as emphasized by Professor Patu told me, when he came in, he was faced by a woeful inadequacy of capital of money, but we had a surplus of labor, which was also a problem. So there was unemployment. And the, um, the, the um, you know, the beauty and the, um, the, you know, the inspired move that he made was, you know, this uh, kibbutz system to use the surplus human resources that you had and use the labor, uh, the capital in a very, very, very um, economical way. So all the investments that were being made by the government at the time we are designed to mop up that excess human capital and to have as little demand on, uh, on financial capital um, as possible. And that was you know, really an inspired um, strategic choice to, um, for development. And as um, Ezenia as said, uh, for, uh, just to answer the question directly, I think we should also look inwards to say to ourselves, um, shouldn't we be electing people who on their own should be going and Absolutely. looking after and trying to bring these templates that have worked in the past. It's our job to elect people who will um, you know, be um, actually inspiring us by their leadership. And uh, if we elect people who uh, are neither inspiring nor are, uh, are interested in learning about how to do things better, then we should also blame ourselves. Um, and you know, fi finally, I think, um, with regards to um, looking forward, um, I, I think these stories are stories that you know that have to be um, that have to be um, heard, and these are documentaries that have to be watched. And um, our job is to continue to um, uh, try and make noise around the world and attract people's attention and say to them, these are the stories of our time. These are the stories of our um, uh, leaders. These are the stories of our. Um, as uh, Winston Churchill would say, we'll continue to, um, you know, to sort of uh, uh, draw uh, attention, of, especially of our children, to come back and look at and listen to these stories and um, learn from them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Uchen, I think there's another question. Uh, open. Would you like to read it out? Okay, I think Uchenna is offline. He's trying to download uh, the, um, the the 
um, he's trying to download the, the tribute clip. Uh, uh, Moise, do, do you want to probably look yes. at it? Yeah. Yes, let me, um, oh, let me look at it. I, I, was, I was muted, I'm here. Um, okay. So if I'm a please, can you uh, enable uh, Chuku, Chukuka to, to ask his question? Chukuka. Chukuka, mute yourself and uh, ask your question. Okay. Go ahead, Chukuka. Can you hear me? Okay, good evening. Um, interesting. SNIA and Ugunabo and the panel. Okay, Ugunabo, Dalo, SNIA, GCNIK, it's um, the center. I follow the center through my cousin Patrick Okibu. And um, from the scratch, it's something that uh, we pray will blossom. You know, and um, it's a good work. But my contribution will primarily be on the fact that, on the basis that I think this needs, this body of work needs a whole lot of publicity. So today, as uh, um, somebody spoke so, so many minutes, I didn't get him right, but he said they want to mention names so that it doesn't seem that you have um, a couple of people in our generation today. The Nigeria is trying to build a set of leadership um, programs. It should get into his hand. It is it, it trans geopolitical. It is for Africa. So Obara has his right of place in the entire African political spectrum, where the likes of Nkrumah, Zik, the great Zik of Africa stands. So Oboroi Foga Beme Uchidiaka, that is the point I'm trying to make. So it has to move, it has to be hello. Chuka, we can't hear you. Uh, I think his line has frozen. So, Uchen, are you ready with the? Are you ready with the tribute? There is a general center for leadership. There is library and a whole lot of institutes. You know, there's a democratic. Hello, can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. So my point still is that is a very forgotten. is something that has to go global. This body of work. So, in ever little support we can as individuals, we will. Then if there are corporate organizations that will support, what we are seeking for is a better Nigeria, a better Africa, and a better world. So Dalono will keep supporting as much as we can mm -hmm. in our individual capacity. You know, I've always been in touch with Patrick and much we could do, we will do. But it is something I'm advocating should get a you know, governance institute you know, there are very good uh, global schools, uh, universities, or educational institutions on leadership and politics. Okay. You know, like governance, so, we, you know we it's need phenomenal. To... And um, it can still happen in our generation. Thank you. Thank you. So we need to take the video now. <laughs>
Um, on that note, on behalf of the Center for Memories, I want to say a big thank you to um, Gero Mokolo, Ezenia Ugonabo, Eddie Kazo for the time you gave to us this evening and driving this conversation. Um, it was quite an interesting conversation for me. Um, I want to join the Center for Memories and Don Ndibo everywhere to say Nanudo Odumamede Chedizua. May your soul rest in peace. Uh, we remember you in a very special way today. Um, yeah, we're having an interesting conversation, but uh, the whole conversation uh, brings some uh, feelings uh, of emotional feelings to us because uh, it brings to memory the fact that you are the person who pushed and ensured that this documentary came to life. And a few months after uh, you, you took a bow. Um, we, 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 we honor your memory and we remember you greatly. We thank all the others who also contributed to the making of this con uh, documentary, those who contributed financially, um, Patrick Okibo and the wife, uh, Ike Chioke, Kinsi Deze, uh, Ezenia Ubenab and the wife, and so many others that I cannot just mention all their names who contributed uh, financially and uh, in other ways to ensure that this documentary came to life. I also thank the board of directors of the Center for Memories for all the support that they give to the work that we do at the center here. Um, I also thank uh, Professor Rina Okonkwo, who is on the board and also the historian, the resident historian of the center. Um, I want to thank all of us who joined us today uh, to participate in this uh, webinar. Uh, the documentary is up now. So if you click on the link on the flyer that we shared and the information we put out, there's the link that is, that is tagged the YouTube link. If you click on that link, you'll be able to join the screen of the documentary. Once again, thank you very much for your time with us today. We truly appreciate. Uh, join, us in, join us next month. We'll put out the date for this next month's screening, and we're also going to use a webinar to usher the screen in, in April, April. Thank you. Darling. Darling. Darling one.